Okay, because I got so many questions about how to remove the shift cables to lubricate them, because boy, I found it made a huge improvement in the shifting quality, um, I decided to do a quickie video on how to uh, do this. And the first thing you have to do is remove those uh, panels, uh, one across here and the one under here. Uh, they are mostly 10 millimeter nuts. Um, or screws. The only real interesting thing is over here on the driver's side, if it's an American car, um, you have your handbrake cable coming in and there is a screw that you think you would have to remove completely, which is damn difficult to do with that handbrake cable. But the hole in the panel for this fitting is actually a slot. So all you have to do is back it out a little bit, do all the other ones for this panel, and then you can just pull the panel towards the rear of the car and it'll come undone. So don't try and pull this thing out because it's a pain in the neck with that handbrake cable. My only other comment is if you have a uh, cordless drill thing and you have a nut driver, you can just put a 10 millimeter uh, socket on the end and make this a real fast uh, thing to accomplish here. So all of my panel bolts are undone, except for this one's just loosened, so we just pull it backwards and you can see it's just a slot here. So saves you a lot of time not trying to take that thing out. Um, and then I'm just gonna Go right up that center panel. They're all 10 millimeters, except at the very front, the last two are 8 millimeters. Obviously, do the uh, nuts up the side, but don't forget to do the uh, three right here under the shift lever. Those have to come off to get the whole panel off, also. Okay, so now my shift cables are exposed their whole length. Um, I put a piece of tape here so I know which one of these goes to which side of the car because you don't want to mix them up. Also make sure that your lock nuts here are tight up against these little fittings which are called clevis forks because you don't want to screw up your uh, shifter settings um, and you have the same setup in the back too uh, so make sure those lock nuts are nice and tight and then you have 10 millimeter nuts and bolts here that you need to pull out and same thing up here 10 millimeter nuts and bolts to pull out. So I have my little bendable wrench here up on top of the bolt and then I'm just going to use my zipper here to unscrew the nut off the bottom. Okay so I removed the uh, nuts and bolts off these two so they're free. Um, next, if you come down a little ways in between the uh, insulation here, there's another 10 millimeter bolt there that needs to come out. Okay, now comes the only tricky part. Um, we're looking towards the front of the car, and you can see the shift cables going into the bracket that is connected to the shift lever. There's a plate here sort of hourglass shape that holds the two shift cable fittings apart and it's hard to see but that plate is held in place by an 8 millimeter bolt which is right up there so there was like some uh, foamy stuff that they had squirted in, so you may have to dig some foamy stuff out to get to that bolt. But that 8 millimeter bolt needs to come out, and then you just pull the plate away. So you can use extensions and a ratchet uh, socket wrench, and just have a lot of extensions coming back to get that angle. I'm going to uh, cheat and use a... Uh, flexible driver and uh, that driver here and just pop it up there. Let's see if I can 
get it out. It is a long bolt, believe it or not. Uh, so bolts out, so now I can pop this little thing out. Now, once that spacer plate is out, if you look at the hole in this fitting, you'll see there's a cut upwards. So that's to remove these two things from the fitting. So you have to move the cutout is a little closer to the driver's side on a left-hand drive car. Um, so this one has to be scooted over to that hole first and popped out. And then this one gets scooted over to the hole and gets popped out. Okay, to do the scooting, I'm using... Uh, channel lock pliers here at their maximum extension. I just put some tape over the jaws so I wouldn't mar things up. So I have to move this one first so I'm going to use the edge here as the place that I'm going to apply pressure to. And as I squeeze the handles you will see. Beep. Okay, so it's moved over to the slot. I'm back at the rear of the car again because before I try and wrestle the thing out of its slot I have to, I have to free up the other ends of the cables. We've already removed the nuts and bolts here so the only thing remaining is this clamp. Uh, again it's a uh, 10 millimeter nut. So that just pops off of there. And then, if we're lucky, the clamp will unclamp. So it's just this mustachy looking thing. And now the cables just pop out and just pull them out of the little rubber thing and they will be dangling. Okay, so now we're looking towards the back of the car that way. Here are the cables. I squeezed this one over to the center. So now we're looking at it from the front back and you probably can't see it very well, but there's a very thin um, circular washer thing um, which you can either try and remove before you pop it out or if you wiggle the thing around enough you can get it out without removing it. Uh, it's rather delicate but it can be done. So it's just a question of moving that thing around and getting it out the hole and then scoot the other one over and get that out the same hole. Okay, now that the cussing and spitting is over from getting those damn fittings out, which is a pain in the ass, um, it's time to lube the cables. So I basically hold them so they're dangling down and this is the gap that you're going to try and squirt it in. Um, if you squirt it in here, it won't do a damn thing. Uh, it's a pretty tight fit between the bar and the sleeve, so I just pull the cable up as much as you can. It gives you a little more gap. Now I'm using TriFlow, which has PTFE, also known as Teflon, in it. Um, I, I'm not an expert on lubricants, but I don't think WD-40 would be a great idea. I think WD-40 is not really that much of a long-term lubricant. Someone mentioned Bow Shield, which is a uh, something developed by Boeing um, and it's supposed to be very good too, so that would probably be equally good. So I do dry, tri flow or maybe Bow Shield, uh, but I would probably not do WD-40. And basically I just squirt it and then let it seep down in. And I would just keep squirting intermittently for a fairly long period of time because it's going to take it a long time 
to seep all the way down the cable. After you've squirted and let it seep for quite a while, then I would turn them upside down and do it from the other end because the lubier they are, I think the better off you'll be. So you say, how do I know when I've lubed them enough? Well, I just figured out the test. If you pull them up and they won't stay up, then I'm guessing you've lubed okay. I guarantee you if your cables have never been lubed when you pull them off the car, <laughs> they will not do this at all. Um, they will be incredibly stiff. So there's your test. If it floats back down just by gravity alone, I think you've lubed enough. So after you get everything nicely lubed up, um, installation is basically doing everything backwards that you've already done. Um, I actually find it's easier to put the cables back in the hole than it was to take them out. Um, and I'm going to use my thingies again, now shortened up, and just go from the edge over here to here. Um, and get them in nice and tight. Uh, I should also mention that you have very delicate pipes here uh, for the AC and I presume hot water for the interior cabin heat. So be very careful. Don't, don't damage those. So when you're done there should be no gaps up here. There is a slot, an empty slot here. So you have an empty slot a ridge, then your little washery thing, and then the fitting, and that's why it should be on both sides. So now you just put your uh, separator plate in and your 8 millimeter bolt, hook up up here, hook up in the back, and you're done. So hope that helps. I find it made a dramatic improvement in my shifting. Hope it does for everybody else. Um, but it's not that difficult a job.